More than putting another man on the moon. More than a New Year's resolution of yogurt and yoga. We need the opportunity to dance with really exquisite strangers. A slow dance between the couch and dining room table at the end of the party while the person we love has gone to bring the car around because it's begun to rain and would break their heart if any part of us got wet. A slow dance to bring the evening home. Two people rocking back and forth like a buoy. Nothing extravagant. A little music. An empty bottle of whiskey. It's a little like cheating. Your head resting on his shoulder. Your breath moving up his neck. Your hands along her spine. Her hips unfolding like a cotton napkin. And you begin to think about how all the stars in the sky are dead. The my body is talking to your body, slow dance. The unchained melody, stairway to heaven, power chord, slow dance. All my life I've made mistakes, small and cruel. I made my plans, I never arrived. I ate my food, I drank my wine. The slow dance doesn't care. It's all kindness, like children before they turn three. Like being held in the arms of my brother. The slow dance of siblings. Two men in the middle of the room. When I dance with him, one of my great loves, he is absolutely human. And when he turns to dip me, or I step on his foot because we are both leading, I know that one of us will die first and the other will suffer. The slow dance of what's to come and the slow dance of insomnia pouring across the floor like bath water. When the woman I'm sleeping with stands naked in the bathroom brushing her teeth, the slow dance of ritual is being spit into the sink. There is no one to save us because there is no need to be saved. I've hurt you. I've loved you. I've mowed the front yard. When the stranger wearing a sheer white dress covered in a million beads slinks toward me, like an oversexed chandelier suddenly come to life. I take her hand in mine. I spin her out and bring her in. This is the almond grove in the dark slow dance. It is what we should be doing right now, scraping for joy. The haiku and honey, the orange and orangutan, Slow dance. I don't know if it's a coldness or just how the body overloaded tends to shut down. But as my brother neared death, I felt nothing that resembled grief. Our unfinished business finished long ago. Our love for each other spoken and real. There wasn't much more to say but goodbye. And one morning we said it, a small moment, and one of us cried. From then on he was delusional, the cancer making him stupid, insistently so, and lost. I wanted him to die. And I wished his wife would say a shame instead of God's will. Or if God had such a will, shame on him. Days later at the viewing, again, 
I wanted to feel something. But for whom? That powdered stranger lying there? That nobody I knew? I was far away, parsing grief, turning it over in my mind. He was simply gone. A dead thing. Anybody's sack of bones. Only when his son spoke, measuring with precise, slow-to-arrive language, the father he had lost, did something in me move. There was my brother restored, abstracted, made of words now. A pale woman is cradling a large red fish that she's stolen from the hospital kitchen. She stands in the bright garden in the cold wind. Black water lilies are gently wrestling her to the gravel's edge. In the struggle, she kisses them on their mouths. They say sadly, Alice, Alice. Grasping her red fish at its banded anus near the black spines of the tail, she knocks them unconscious with it. Even in their drowse, the water lilies trouble Alice. Her boss, Mr. Calvin, has had surgery, is dying now in the freshly plastered solarium. She'll be out of work by morning. Her sister thinks they are going to lose the house. Alice was praying for a miracle. They drilled holes in his skull. And the red fish has fallen in with the water lilies into the small pond. It shivers, breaks to the left, leaps into the air, and then without a thought for Alice, swims toward the bottom to sleep in the mud.